So this is another question which asks us to calculate confidence intervals. The variable we are looking at and which we shall label x is the length a particular subscriber is connected to an internet site. So the, the duration of that single connection, that's what we call x. And we don't know how this is distributed. There's no information. And equally, we don't know what the variance of that random variable x is. So sigma square x is unknown. This situation means that if we want to calculate a confidence interval, we need either large n, large sample size, or we need to assume that x is normally distributed. And we shall do this, where we assume that x is normally distributed. Now, as in this case, sigma squared x is unknown. It follows from that that the uh, sample, uh, sample average x bar is t distributed with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So with that under our belt, we can start writing the structure of the confidence interval. We are after mu x, the uh, true mean of x. And we have a lower and upper bound, which is centered around x bar. And we're subtracting and adding a term, which is a product of uh, a value from the t distribution in this case, and times the standard deviation of x bar. So this is what we call the lower bound and CL, and that's the upper bound CU. So since we have three different samples, we will actually do all these calculations in a table. Okay, so we'll extend this table, which we have here for every, for each of the three samples, we know the sample size x bar and s squared of x. So we need s squared of x bar, and that of course is just s squared of x divided by n. So that's the first thing we're going to calculate. We have the variance of uh, the sample variance of x and we divide by the respective n and we get these three values. Okay, so next what we really need in the confidence interval calculation is sx bar, so the standard deviation. That is just the square root of the previous column. So for instance, the square root of 0 0.008 is 0 0.0895. Okay, so now we've got the s x bar. We actually already know the x bar. So the only thing we are missing to calculate the confidence interval is this value from the t distribution. That of course depends on the sample size. So that will be a different value for each of the three samples. And we want the value of the t distribution that cuts off alpha over two uh, percent of the distribution, so that cuts off two and a half percent in the distribution. And you can go to the t-table to confirm that these are the respective values. Now we have all the information we need to calculate the lower and upper bounds, and we can do that. So you just need to plug in the, the three values into the lower and upper bound calculations, and these are the values you should find. That's just simple calculation, simple, simple algebra. I don't need to go through this here in detail. All right, so here are our three confidence intervals. We calculated the lower and upper bound. So the second question is, do these confidence intervals get narrower as the sample size increases? And the answer is obviously yes, if you look at the confidence intervals. And the reason for that is this standard deviation of x bar. That is the square root of s, the variance of x, which is more or less the same across all samples. That doesn't change with the sample size, but divided by the sample size. So as the sample size goes up, that standard deviation of x bar goes down. And therefore, the values we subtract and add to the sample mean decrease, reducing the width of the interval.